What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode 127. Menace and the Man, Stan the Man, Dennis the Menace. Be sure to click that like. Well, hit one of these. Be sure to click that like and subscribe button. Leave some comments yeah. down below. Where Where is it? Like, by the point, where would it be? Uh, I don't know. Who knows where it, I could move it around, I think. So, somewhere. Down there, right? Just It'll down. Just down beneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I got two kids, all right? And... Listen, they play every sport underneath the earth, and I need the money. I didn't make, you know, Aljamain money. What did you say, Aljamain money? I didn't make Aljamain money or Henry Cejudo money where I could be making moves outside, you know, my blood money of fighting. Oh, dude. So Wait, real wait. Quick, that, that's why we're going to run these numbers up. Let's go, people. Yeah, do the right thing. Anyways, anywho, um... I saw uh, Ally Quinta put up that Alderman wants to work or pick Connor's brain on starting his own rum company. Alderman did an interview. I want to say maybe it was the Megan O'Leary interview where he said that, or an interview somewhere where someone asked him about him and Rob. Great idea. Anything. He's Jamaican. He's got the he's got the position right now to sling some rum. I he think, drinks. I, I think he's been in talks about doing it, and I think he now has been in like doing it. Something's going on with it already, and now he's saying with that he wants to pick Connor's brain, so mm. that way it can blow up. I think he's already yeah. into it though. Awesome. I buy. But, but right on to Al Jermaine is a good spot to go. UFC 288 just wrapped up this weekend. What did you hear about the performance? Because you fell asleep early. You did not get to watch. The yeah. Um, I heard it was a little boring. Um, but then I, you know, all the all in all, like people want to see people get a slugfest, right? But I also heard like from a very, you know, these are two very highly touted, skilled guys playing chess with each other, you know? Well, it also depends. I was going to say it depends on who said it was boring because I saw chess, you know, high right. level chess. Yeah. So and if you know chess, chess is can be exciting to watch if you know every fucking in and out of it, you know. Um, but I also like watching street fights too, where it's just. you. Well, where I'm more of a purist and I do like those type of tactical battles where it's like. Almost the the judging conversation came up in this fight too, but I, Aljamain did clearly win. But where I like the tactical battles, I feel like you you like people slinging leather a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I you know I saw the pictures and you know uh, Suhudo looked a little more lumped up than yeah. uh, than Aljamain. Aljamain then, had nothing. Right, but I also heard that Henry was a little banged up even going to the fight so just a uh, nick can make a an already lump flare up pretty easy you know by banged up are you talking about the cut cut and like you know some long you know some smaller lumps like let's say you punched me in the eye and then two weeks later you you punch me half as hard it's gonna blow up like it did when you punched me in the eye two weeks ago for sure you know uh, he he looks a little bit hearsay, and so for my take, I I wrote you like what I like my quick synopsis in a text message of like UFC 288. But Henry was a little slow to start, and that's happened before. He he's lost some first rounds, but he's also blown people out in the first round. But just slow start. But that's also Aljamain was like, no, you're not going to be Henry Cejudo. You're going to do my dance today. You know what I mean? Mm. And then and very good at his dance, man. So Henry Henry took him down first, if I remember correctly. Nice okay. little night. So I think he got maybe got stuffed on the first takedown. I forget. But then when Henry did take him down, it reminded me of Sermonara, where it was just like it was actually beautiful chain wrestling, where he went for that Cejudo body lock and the inside trip, but the way he got there and then walked Aljamain like the little setup before the actual trip just to make sure he got the trip, got right. it, and then Aljamain just, you know, grappled his way out, didn't get in too bad of a spot, worked his way back up, and then Aljamain wound up taking him down. 
So what were the number of takedowns to takedowns? Like how many did Suhuro have? How many did, Al did Aljamain have? Aljamain had four. And I think Suhudo had three. That's a statement. Yeah. There's that, right? And then when Aljamain took him down, took his back, right? He then took that round. He stole that round, right? Yes. He, he could take his back the whole time, the whole round. He took it at the end of the round, but he didn't. He had it for the, that round, you know. Right. And which then is even... like, which is one of his things. If he gets your back. He's he's gonna be there for the rest of them. If he gets it in four minutes and fifty nine seconds, he's gonna be there for four the rest of that round. Almost even like you saw, I, like Aljo's grappling was a lot for Henry to deal with. That it looked like Henry went. That's kind of out the window a little bit. Like I can take downs for points, but I'm not gonna grapple with him. I'm gonna. I gotta. You know, there was no grappling from Cejudo. He recognized really. it. Like the takedowns were more of like just in, in situations, not like he was going for the takedown to right. pass his guard and whatnot. But yeah, Aljamain just not, he didn't shock me. But the thing that I saw in the fight was just knowing how wrestlers think, like you, you're D, you were D1, you know, you were ranked <laughs> top 20 in the nation, top 25, whatever it was at one point, like high, you know, and yeah. who knows what you would have did your senior year, your, right. your final year of wrestling. And then if you could have went, wrestled internationally a lot of guys like at that same level that you had like you were there that stigma that comes with like a d3 guy right <laughs> right right you know aljamain's different but that stigma like uh there were yes. comments on the youtube saying like no chance i posted a video of you saying that aljamain was going to take him down they were like no fucking chance oh cursed but no chance you know for every um, time you curse, you just have to do like push up or something. Yeah, that's a good one. But you know who oh, curses? We, 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 the only way with the medicine man that makes money is we pay our, each other like five bucks in like a little jar. <laughs> but then you know who I need you to shoot a shot and get on? I would love to interview because he is one of my heroes. John Anik. Okay. Curses more than anyone. He'll come on here and he will curse up a storm. Like I don't know. I don't know how many private conversations you've ever had with him. Uh, he was one of those. Yeah, I've, I've had multiple. Yeah, I don't know how professional he was in those conversations, but when he gets on podcasts, he seems to like let like his mouth just goes and like, oh, I didn't know, you know we're talking so like funny this. Is he looks so uh professional when he has the microphone, he's in front of the camera, right? But as soon as he's off camera, it's like he almost like his hat. He's got like a fitted backwards hat. Yeah, like a T-shirt. You're like you. You look like, like I might cross the other side of the street. Like you're like a little like you look a little ghetto a little bit. You know. Yeah, but big John Attic fan. He curses like, a lot. Fly like Jordan's on. Like I'm like. But so, yeah. we are. That's another thing I thought of. Menace and the Man. We are like the ADHD show. We have such a hard yeah. time of just staying because it's two yeah. people with ADHD. Yes. Or whatever it would be, ADD. But so Aljo wins. I'm sure you saw that. That was the thing that was all over social media. And we talk about Marab yes. stealing the show? That's what I'm saying. That was what was all over social media. So here, for starters, they're bringing in O'Malley. You didn't really close enough to where, like, Dennis Bermudez, you would have been sweating. And it was a split decision. I thought Aljo won. I thought it was either 4-1 to one or 3-2. to two. There were a few very close rounds. Then there was the, the clear rounds. The clear rounds were more for Aljo, I felt. Yeah. And then there's also the thing is like, and I've always said it, you have to beat the champ. Yes. You can't. If, the, if it's got to be, a, if it's a coin toss, it always has to go to the champ. So the way, remember Mike Brown gave us MMA decisions and it has all the, where it's the, a lot of the media that put their score on Twitter, it'll put them all. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Maybe 20 to 10, 25, 23 to seven type deal with the scores in favor of Aljamain. And then there were people that I heard and would just saw people scoring. People thought Cejudo won. People were like, at first glance, I thought Cejudo won. I saw Dana White said he thought Aljamain won. Like, so people thought, you know, it was closer than it was. It, it was definitely a fight where, again, I thought Aljamain clearly won, but three to two. We had a three two, maybe four one, right? Yeah, but probably three two. You know, 
And then it just, we need more judges. We need to change that system. But I heard Dana did an interview too recently. He said, we're probably not going to change the rounds anytime soon. We're not going to change. Like it's, it'd be tough to change the rounds, you know, go to like a 15 minute first round or a 10 minute first round or just a flat first round. Yeah, no, I don't think that's, I don't think that's the move. I think. Yeah. I'm just saying the move is judging. The, the, we don't need to change someone. At, so that was a topic recently, but he will entertain, or I think the fighters need to come together if they think there's a problem and try to work with the athletic commissions to. So there is, I had words with this one guy one time because he did, there's this guy on Instagram and he's got this way of judging where it's, a one zero minute of each round. So every, so like, you know, like I've seen judges like fucking on their phone fights going on. They're on their phone or they're fucking like, or watching YouTube or some shit. I'm like, yo, the fight's happening right now. How are you not? That's bullshit. Where if they had to judge each minute in each round, a one or a zero, you got to be kind of paying attention, right? Yeah. Well, there was controversy. There was one judge. So remember Cejudo lost to Benavidez, a split decision, and it was controversial a little bit? Right. This One of the judges that was on that fight that scored it for Benavidez was on this fight and gave the fifth round that Cejudo was one of the rounds that Cejudo probably clearly won, gave it to Aljamain. And if it would have went the other way, I think that would have been his scorecard, meaning that Cejudo would have won. Like, just, I think we need, there needs to be more judges. That's the first step that could be taken. At minimum, five judges. Well, like I said, this, there's this, and then with that score, also let a fighter know where he's at in the, in the fight. The, the coaches, or you're saying live scoring? Live scoring. So if you did every minute, so you could look up between the first and second round, like, man, oh, man, I lost three of those five minutes. I lost that round. Let me. I know some shows have tried it. I've never paid close enough attention to the results or how much it changed or heard any fighters speak on. You know, if yeah, it was but also, or not. also, that takes away like if you fucking punish someone bad, bad for two minutes, and the three minutes you, I don't know, back up. But you had to do it on Queer Street and almost finished them. You know, like, yeah, you win that round, even though you only dominated two of the three minutes, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, the ADD kicked in again, and we went to that whole thing. The judging, the judges were announcing the decision, or Bruce Buffer's announcing the decision, and he comes with, oh shit, it's going to be split. So I was like, oh, wow. Did the were the are the judges Henry Cejudo fans? You know, do they yeah. think do they think that he's the greatest combat sports athlete of all time? You know, that's a thing that you I'm sure being in that position and guys like right there you got to worry like when the judge says when Bruce Buffer's like split decision you're probably like fuck like yeah does that does that judge have a picture from five years ago with Henry Cejudo right. you know or have a picture with my opponent from you know. There were, in all honesty, there was only one fight that was like, that was a split decision that was like, well, I don't know. And that was the Mac Rice fight. Yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. And then in second place would be Darren Elkins. You know? And then... Third place, I guess, would be Holloway. And then those other two split decisions, I was just like, oh, I won this. Yeah. And I was like, what? When I didn't win, I was like, what? But so I think Cejudo thinks he did enough to win, but then kept saying, I need to rewatch the fight. Aljo, I think, confident, like, kind of took the fifth round yeah, off. Yeah, because Aljamain is one that, like, you can read his emotions pretty well. He kind of took the fifth round off and just kept play, laid the you know played the clock out. And then when they said split, you saw him go like, "Oh no!" Like you know, "Oh, ooh, ooh." Then they gave him one scorecard, and then the, th the third scorecard was for him. And you know, 
amazing performance. He got the takedowns on Henry. At one point, there was a little funny moment where Henry liked to defend a takedown. Did was he in a full. Him, right? What happened? He hit him with a duck under. Aljo did. He pe- yeah, he did a peek yeah, out. Yeah, he did the little peek out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how he got one of his takedowns. But I'm saying Cejudo defending the takedown was in a full-blown split. Like, right. you know, Cejudo's little body, his little legs, just completely split it out. And then Aljamain, like, sucked him up and got that takedown. But it was just funny. And then I forget who. The cage. Oh, maybe Connor. So- Connor said something about it. That was one of the... We'll, we'll get back to Marab, but Connor was like, you know, uh, so Cejudo made, Cejudo made a bunch of videos telling Connor what he needs to do to get better and blah, blah, blah. Right. Did you see Connor's videos? Yeah. Well, no, I didn't see the video. I saw like a tweet. Oh, my God. His video was amazing. He was like, you were doing this little, this little thing, you know? <laughs> and then uh, he had a hat on and shit and just talking shit to him. And then he's like, this guy's a he fucking, had- this guy's a fucking genius, eh? Like talking about Cejudo, but uh, what was I gonna say about that? I forgot. Uh, Connor's a big Sterling fan, they're like bros. I feel can't stand Cejudo as well. That happened for a mm-hmm. lot of people. I saw Adesanya, a lot of people were openly. So, I told you, Cejudo said the real fighters are picking me. I saw a lot of fighters openly being like, Nope, Sterling, fuck Cejudo, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, uh, yikes. Mm. But the Connor clapping at Henry was funny, but then Marab. Oh. So back to that. They set it up. Dana said he regretted setting it up, but he sets it up. Al Jermaine is giving his post fight speech. So the way what's his face walked in, he could have stole the moment, O'Malley. Like he came up behind Aljo. He could have gotten his face and just blah blah blah. He goes to take off his jacket and then he made the biggest mistake right there. He went hold this, and just handed it off to anyone there willing to take it. It was Marab. So Marab goes, oh, 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 yeah, yeah. bro. Oh, my God. And then, he, then he tweeted, like, he could, you know, you could have gave me a tip. There's a picture of when he put the jacket on, and he's standing there. He's the shortest one in the photo. He's, like, looking up at everyone talking, and the cheese grin on Ally Aquinta's face of him watching everything going on. Then Marab goes and jumps on the cage. The athletic commission's hitting him and screaming. He's, like, not getting down. Then Al Aquinta goes, come on, Al. Like, I mean, come on, Marab. Like, hop down. It's okay. It's me, Al. He hops down. Then O'Malley starts going, yo, where's my jacket? Where's my jacket? And it's totally respectful. You kind of see Marab going, oh, no, no, I got your jacket. I'll give you your jacket. Takes it off, folds it, goes to hand it to him. And then Joe Rogan and Al Jermaine come over like there's a problem. But there was no problem, you right. know. And then it turned yeah. into like more of a little thing. But then Marab versus Cejudo is now looking like it's going to be the fight. Yeah, I think. Well, I mean, what do you think in Cejudo's head? It's like, fuck, let me get Aljo's sidekick. And then after I beat him, call out Aljo again. So you missed it. So Hudo took his gloves off. I was like, oh, no, Henry. Like, don't do this. He was going to retire again. I was like, man. Yeah, and then he thought about it in the locker room, I think, right? I, yeah, he t- he gave a post-fight speech and was like, I don't know what, what I'm going to do next. And he gave, like, the DC answer where he's like, I only fight for championships, you know? Right. But yes and no. You lost this fight, Henry. So, like, and here's the thing with Cejudo. He's there, you know? One win with, with three years off. One win. Oh, w- there as far as fighting, yes. With but one yeah. win, and he's fighting for a title. You know, sure. Especially with the timing thing, the way fighting works out. If he stays ready, three weeks, four weeks notice, something happens, takes a backup spot. Like the MMA <laughs> landscape always changing. Someone's hurt. But either of them really. T- I mean, I don't know if like a lot of kicks were checked or how their hands are, but they didn't take. Visibly, a lot of damage. Aljo did some work. Okay. So Hudo landed some shots. You know, he I don't know what his number was, but Aljo landed some good leg kicks. Landed some good body kicks. Like if, if any... If, well, so, so a leg, a good solid leg kick, okay, you're, you know, one week. But if you check shin the shin, we're talking like a month, month and a half. That too... That 
I don't know what it looked like live, but on TV, it looked like Cejudo was landing the harder shots. You know what I mean? Like hard Again, kicks. Next to hard shots, fine. It, like in meat, if you're hitting meat, it didn't hurt you to throw the kick. It didn't, you know, it sure hurt the guy in the moment and kind of slowing him down. But in terms of recovery, the meat and muscle re- recovers pretty quickly. But if you hit the bone, that takes time. Like a contusion, that takes time, you know, where like, you, you're you not trying to hop right into another fight, you know, or even a camp. Aljamain's durable, right? He's been bruised up, though, before from getting so hit. Aljamain reminds me, like, he's a lot like Chris Wade, where they, like... They don't bruise. They don't get, yeah. No, they, like, wherever, like, a impact's coming, they're, like, it, like, just grazes them, or, like, they're, like... Yeah, the only time I, the only time I ever really remember seeing damage on Wade was the Mob, the Russian the Mobilev fight where Wade got the stitch right here. Right. Other than that, pretty minimal as far as I remember. And then Aljamain, this after the Cejudo fight, just didn't look like he had anything. I just saw an interview today. He Cejudo also uh, like I'm not being right. Like black people don't bruise or like you know like I rarely even me like I wouldn't. The darker you are, the less damage shows up on you. You of. said it. I was thinking it. I didn't want to, you know. No, but I mean, it's kind of, I mean, yeah. But so Marab versus Cejudo, how do you think that goes? So what, So you didn't see the fight? You'll, you'll watch it, I'm sure. Cejudo yes. was back. That's the thing, too. The ADD jumping around again. Aljamain's not Cyril Gaon. And I, so you know what I mean? Like, John Jones had an easier route. Michael Bisping is not Aljamain. I love Bisping. Bisping's top 10, top five, maybe middleweights of all time. You know what I mean? Um, is he top five? Maybe. Maybe he's number five. You know what I mean? Not top bad. 10. You know what I mean? Because he was ranked like eighth when he fought for the title. Yeah, and he had the win. Um, he's up there. He's got a lot of wins at middleweight. He had a long career, but Aljamain is unless Aljamain even the Aljamain right now. If he loses the next five fights, it tarnishes him a little bit. But the Aljamain right now is the best bantamweight of all time, tied with Cruz, if anything. But I think he's up there because of the UFC. You know. Yeah. I forgot yeah. where I was going with that. No, you were. Well, I think you were talking about uh, you were you were asking me how does Cejudo go against Marab? Yes, but then I saw how exactly. did so. Like I said, Aljamain is very hard to hit, but so is TJ Dillashaw. But TJ comes forward with some sh- shit. Also, TJ is not as long as Aljamain, um, but Cejudo slept him like. <laughs> How did 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 Cejudo look really powerful? Like, did any of those power shots hit? The first round, he started slow and almost had like the Connor right, pull out. Yeah, gonna make sure I don't do too much. Don't guess. You know what I mean. And then yeah. I would say the kind of the way John Jones did. He probably felt a little off, a little goofy, and even I, the person I was watching, what I kept saying. He's getting close. Like, I didn't like the way Aljamain was moving, but Cejudo was, like, swinging haymakers and, like, just missing. You know what I mean? With Aljamain with his hands down. Like, Aljamain would come in with a combination, and on the exit, Cejudo would swing a haymaker, but he was too short or whatever. Just didn't have the range at that moment. But I was worried about those going forward, you know? I see him get slapped. Yeah. Then the second round, he turned it on. I think the second round is the one... So the first round was close, but I think it was Aljo. The second round, I think, was Cejudo. The third round was Aljo. And then the fourth round is could have went either way, but was probably Aljo. And then the fifth round could have went either way. Well, well, the fifth round was Cejudo. Close fight. The rounds were close. But there were a few. Marab versus Henry. Just... Style. There is, there is space for Marab just outworks him and just puts on a hard, heavy pace and just outworks Henry, where Henry's fucking hitting him with everything he got. Marab's like, and just walks through it and just 
end that too at first, the first round, Sahuda looked a little winded, like a couple deep breaths. And I was like, oh no, is he not there? Then he picked it up for the next 20 minutes, you know? Right. So, so I, was like, I don't know if he got rid of his first win. That's like a, that was always a big thing when I'd be warming up and, and getting ready for fights is like you do, they, they call it getting rid of your first wind. Yes. Like get tired, like get that out. But then in your head, you're like, but am I getting myself tired for later when I'm actually fighting? It's like a weird, a weird, mess, you know, cause I've done, you know, you, you, you and you've been in there where you're in a fight and you're like, just, when you're fighting, you're under lights. The air's thinner. The the oxygen's like a little harder to get in. Just it's it's just weird. Like they your your body it's it's fight or flight. So your body is feeding so many different things for you to stay alive. That oxygen isn't always like a number one priority, you know. So sometimes when you go, oh, like I'm gonna, am I tired? And you start, am I tired? Am I getting tired? Am I? Am I, you know, am I going to run out of gas, you know? Well, that's a crazy thing. You ever see with beginners, they hold the breath. Yeah, yes. For a lot of things. For like, you know, they'll go for moves and they'll go like, Ugh! and like, yeah. kind of like, it's like, yeah. no, that's the last thing you want to do. Right. Which I think for, you know, both Henry Cejudo and Aljamain Sterling is, you know, wrestling for decades. They know how to grapple and breathe, you know? And I mean, also hitting mitts and sparring, they know how to breathe and punch too. You know, these guys are the complete opposite of amateurs. Um, but stylistically, when you look at it on paper, Marab versus Henry, it's like Henry probably hits harder. He's knocked out more people. He's probably more accurate. Henry on paper is a better striker. Or I mean, a better uh, like... Uh, at wrestling, like... I think he's a better striker too. Marab's a little wild, but Marab makes like such a chaotic fight that it works. Yes, and he doesn't stop either. Where That's instead of saying. instead of landing this, Marab pushes you over and then lands a running club in right hand when he's running at you. You know, right? Him and Frivola have kind of similar styles where they're just like, it's I'm going to be on or around you with these. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Favola is a little more controlled violence, you know, like, you know, Marab is just this pace, 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 pressure, pressure, pressure. Favola is like, don't even come near me because, you know. Stay right this. Yeah. We'll get to that. We'll get to that fight. But Cejudo, Marab, they don't have a timeline. Cejudo took off his gloves, was thinking retirement. I guess he went and talked with the... You know, the team, Coach Eric, all the people, you know, saw all the the fanfare and the rave that Marab was getting for stealing the jacket. Cejudo put out, I'm back or not back, I'm whatever. I'm good to go. I want Marab as soon as possible. Boston. I think Boston, they're going to Boston in August, I believe. So um, if he yeah. beats Marab, does he... Get Aljo. Or if I he, would think so. But then here's what happens there. If he beats Marab, Aljamain beats O'Malley, Aljamain goes up to 145. Which I think, I think Aljamain completely obliterates O'Malley. Yes and no. I mean, um, as soon as as soon as Aljamain takes down O'Malley, the fight is over. It's possible. That's no, the I'm, I'm, calling, I'm calling it. That's the scenario, but then there is that other scenario where maybe he gives him a little bit of problems on the feet, makes his range work for him. He's he's big, he's young, but yes, his hole is definitely the grappling. He surprised me against Jan O'Malley. He and even the Pedro Munoz fight, he surprised me in the Pedro Munoz fight. Even though the way the fight ended, I thought Munoz was going to walk him down more. You know what I mean? Right. Yes, he he is a problem with his range. He's good, O'Malley. People could. But- He's good. But the two guys you just named are not monsters on the ground like Aljamain is. And then and they're not Aljamain. Aljamain's bigger than both of them. But O'Malley I also think I also think O'Malley dodged a bullet not having to fight Sanhagen either. If we're gonna go there, he dodged a few bullets. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, like he didn't have to go through the murderer's row. Think of Al Jermaine's journey to a title shot. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, which makes me go, I mean, yeah, yeah, he is the GOAT of fucking lost the Marias, but run that back. That That's a different story today. Like, bad. Yeah. And so Cejudo... As you say, you know, the most decorated combat sports athlete of all time because of his two championships, his Olympic gold medal. It is true, and it can hold true to even Khabib. The longer you keep fighting, it's going to happen. It's hard. It's easier to become yes. champion than to stay on top. Yes. Like, even if you're the best, the GOAT, you know, whoever, like John Jones, it could happen. Zig, when you should have zagged, and, you know, the, the sport's messed up like that, that it's, you know, unforgiving to where... The favorite's not always the winner. The best can, you know, you see how a lot of the, the goats, if you will, the end of their career is never good. No. 99 times why, out of 100. I know, and the reason why is they're just getting paid too much money to, even if they don't feel 100, like, ugh. I mean, even if I lose, I'm going to go cash a $800,000 check, minimum. Yeah, at that point. So even that. Who, who doesn't, you, you could ask anybody right now. In, in all of Menace of the Man audience, who wouldn't go get their fucking head knocked in for $950,000? I oh mean, everybody's God. doing it. Tyrone. I'm still like, man, 100000 maybe I'll get one more. <laughs> I'd fight Tyrone Spong, and right when we touch gloves, yeah. I'd just be like, Tyrone, take it easy on me. Take it easy. Go easy on me, you know? Anybody. But every champion, at the, even at the end, goes... I still got this. So not only am I going to get that money, I'm going to win too. Yeah, it's hard to walk away, especially when you're getting paid that much. Yeah. But so O'Malley versus Aljamain, you think completely one-sided. Yes. Yeah, I'm not going to sleep on O'Malley, but Aljamain is the GOAT at this point. So... Dominic Cruz has a claim, especially because of the injuries, but the same thing with him that I'll say about Cejudo. It's harder to stay on top than it is to get there. So when he would have been champion, if he wouldn't have been injured, shit would have got rough, possibly. Yeah, sure. There's a lot of guys since he got injured that are killers. And even you see how unforgiving the sport is in his last couple fights. I think he was beating Cheeto and then got hit with the kick, or it was a close competitive fight. And then who was the fight before that? Oh, it was Frank Yeager, I think, versus Cheeto, was winning and then got hit with the kick. Yep. But, but so what was the other ones? Conor on Cejudo. Oh, UFC 288 would be Bilal. Bilal Muhammad's amazing performance. He he completely nullified Gilbert. So what would you hear about that one? I was told Gilbert hurt his arm in a takedown attempt, and was fighting four rounds with one arm. It was either and the takedown attempt, either the takedown attempt or the kicks. Looked flat, overtrained, burnt, burnt out. Burnt out. But so he kept switching southpaw, landing a straight left. That landed a few times, Bilal. Then he would switch southpaw and start throwing a hard. As soon as he would switch... And Gilbert would like load up his stance, hard left kick would come. So Gilbert was blocking that kick and just his arm was red. His side was red. Both of his arms were red from just constantly, you know, that's what shut him off. It was the shoulder either from the takedown attempt or that kick. And then Bilal just kept going to the well. Like he just didn't even move this hand from here. He just kept it up the whole time. If it was a video game, you'd be like this fucking guy will not stop throwing this kick and it wouldn't stop you know what i mean like gilbert didn't even the block to that hurts you you know what i mean yes yes um back back in the day i've been on the other side of that with like training with laflair such a hard kick and he's southpaw and just so below kept going southpaw to throw this kick correct yep yeah just uh yeah that southpaw kick that rain, right under yeah. and so henry in the corner is like to gilbert he's switching on you you could switch too 
And Gilbert's like, yeah. And then you saw like one or two moments where Gilbert would switch for a second and then be like, no, I'm not, you know, I'm not, it's already not going good. I'm not going to start playing this game. So, um, Gilbert on his best day, is that a different fight? Not that Bilal, you know, even with the shoulder injury, like that, like before the shoulder injury. So if he got hurt on that takedown attempt, it was because it was a takedown attempt from very far out. That wasn't set up, and he got like pancaked on the takedown attempt because, because he was getting beat up on the feet a little bit. Damn. Yeah. Uh, is Bilal still in Milwaukee? Yeah. Rufu Sport. With, uh, or no, Chicago. Chicago. With yeah, he's not. He's not in Rufu Sport anymore, or he's probably still trains there. But no, he's in Chicago now. So I saw Bilal. Lamas's guys. What happened? With Ricardo Lamas's guys. No, I'm not sure. I know he trains with his old co- his coach that he's had for a minute, the guy Lewis Taylor. We've had on the show before, and I saw him. He trains with Juliana Pena. Okay. So whatever that gym that they have in Chicago, and I think he still travels. Well, I mean, it's working for him then, right? Bro, he looked the best I've ever seen him look. We have to eat that crow. I was gonna, I'm gonna hit him up and we'll try to get him on, but I, we, I'm gonna tell him we have to eat crow. We picked Gilbert. We apologize. You surprised us, you know. Not just. I didn't just pick Gilbert because Gilbert's been on the show more. I picked Gilbert because I thought Gilbert was going to win. The odds makers picked Gilbert. A lot of people picked Gilbert. Bilal just fucking surprises everybody and fucking damn that kick, just winging um, that kick. Is Bilal because there's a certain way the UFC likes to be, or just the MMA community likes to be like entertained, if you will. Right, so people that are annoying are like, all right, this. Yes, he's he's missing that entertainment factor. But I mean, it shows his podcast is good. His for the fans, for the I again, I love the chess matches. For the casual fan, his fighting styles missing the entertainment factor. So it's not what he's saying. You think it's the well, also that his trash talk doesn't have the. Colby or Connor effect, you know. Like his fans love his trash talk. Casuals, mm-hmm. I don't think, are picking up on it. I think well, that's the, the casuals, they like a nice rehearsed, you know, trash talk. Perfect example. If his promo after he beat Gilbert, if he be- beat Gilbert or stopped Gilbert more impressively, and then his promo after he beat Gilbert was better than it was. Dana White would have went to the post-fight press conference and been like, yeah, we're thinking about we're going to have Colby fight the winner of this fight. Bilal. Bilal's that guy right now. One million percent. If it captivated the internet and the internet was blazed about Bilal. You know what I mean? Well, that's so so hard to do. Whoa, whoa. Same thing. As a fighter, all you're thinking is just win. Just... Same thing Lenny, as Leon Edwards, though. Bilal's in that Leon Edwards thing. He's winning, mm-hmm. but he's winning decisions. And, you know, Leon knocked out Usman, but to get to that title fight, nothing but decisions. Right. So the casual fan who wants blood and doesn't like the chess match and doesn't care for the grappling, you know, doesn't see the high stakes and goes, why is he throwing one strike at a time? I, I'd be throwing three or four combinations, you know? Right, right. Yeah. That's why Colby, so Bilal's got to sit out like a year right now. Eight months, six months. Oh, great for Colby. Colby versus Leon is not happening for a few months, so he's going to have to wait a little bit. But Bilal looked good. Hopefully Gilbert's not too banged up. Heals up quick. Yeah, but Gilbert should go take fucking... Seven seven months off, eight months off. It broke my heart a little Get bit. That off, go heal, go back to drawing board. It broke my heart a little bit for Gilbert because I do know he's getting up there in age. This is kind of his last run ish. Right. How so old is he? 35? 36. He's about to be 37 in July. Okay. Yeah. Damn. He, I mean, he made, a, he made a boatload of money this year. Oh, yeah. And the fans love him. The UFC loves him. Because of that, he is always going to be one or two spectacular fights away from talks, you know? Yeah. But this win definitely, this loss definitely sets him back. But so Bilal's going to sit out for that winner. 
Dana White then went to the post fight presser and did double down. He said, yes, Bilal fighting the winner of Colby Leon. We don't have a date for Colby Leon yet, though. So, okay, we'll see what happens there. And then we'll kind of wrap it up here. We got your boy Jordan, Charles Jordan, big menace fan. Yeah, I was, I, I told you, like the off the jump, I was like, man, not in love with this fight for him because Cron Gracie is such a genie on the ground, right? Jordan just kept it standing the whole time. Same thing though. Cron Gracie hasn't fought in three years. Oh, okay. That and came he back, jumped like stretched out for takedowns, right? Three years, and he came back in the same fighting ability that he had when he lost his last fight. He couldn't take, I think it was Cub Swanson who beat him up. Yep, couldn't take Cub down, was shooting down. It was like, yo, this guy has no takedowns. He came into this fight, like, yo, you got no takedowns. And, and then he started guard guard. pulling, and Charles Jordan's good enough that was ground and pound, you know. You know, from not having that jiu-jitsu background, when you go against the high-level guy, just T-Rex arms and, you know, Charles Jordan got in his guard and for the first, like, two minutes just sat like this. It's like throwing, like, short little elbows, you know? (laughs) Right. Good for him, man. That's good fight IQ. 100%. Kron got, like, frustrated, more tired, and then Charles Jordan just started piecing him up on the feet. Can't take three years off, bro, if you're anybody, even Henry Cejudo. John Jones had the perfect opponent. You know what I mean? Right. But then, big win for Jordan, and then Frivola. We'll kind of wrap it up there. Frivola beating Drew Dober. Huge win. Big win. Huge Drew, win. Drew Dober, is, he's been around for a while. Uh, didn't he spend some time at 170? No. But I know Drew Dober, I don't think so. Not Drew Dober's never fought at 170. Might have. I'd have to check it. But Drew Dober is like, I know for a minute he was like Gaethje's main training partner, Usman's main training partner, like the guy behind the guy type of situation. Like, oh, how do you get ready for these fights? I train with Drew Dober. And then I think he was like the gatekeeper for the top 15. You know, perennial perennial 13, 14, 15 type of guy, 16. So Provola beating him is like, yo. And then how he beat him. I don't know who else has beaten Dober like that. No. Yeah, bloodied him up, knocked him out. Because Dober hopped up quick, like, what the hell? Mm -mm. Yeah, he hopped up quick-ish, but he was like, you know, like five minutes later, Favola walked up, 30 seconds later, Favola walked up to shake his hand. He was like, what do you mean, shake my hand? I still want to fight, you know? And Favola was like, all right, whatever, bro. He'll get your loser check. (laughs) Yeah, no, he got walloped with a right hand. And then a couple of good ground and pound. The next couple weren't going to be good, you know. Yeah, hammer fisting. He it was... wasn't. It wasn't a hundred percent checkmate. Like he wasn't flatlined, but like got dropped, started coming back, and then Favola was like waking him up with like hammer fists and little shit, you know. So it wasn't going to go good. Oh, those were those were levels like Donkey Kong. Oh no, yeah, no, not little like that. I'm saying not fucking was glancing him, wasn't connecting flush, was about to connect flush, you know. Yeah. But so Favola then called out Patty Pimblet. So Love it. do you sit out though if you're Favola? Because Pimblet just had surgery. I think just move on. Or or just go fight somebody else, keep winning, and then every time you win, just keep trolling this guy. You know? Because if you if you now, but Patty Pimblet's like one of those guys where like if you're if you lost and you're not headed to a title, well, they've been feeding Patty fucking here. Eat. Eat. You know? So Frivola called out Patty, and Patty responded and said, Yeah, kind of weird that he's calling me out when I just had surgery. I'm not even training. But yeah, sure, I'll fight him. And the first thing I thought is I'm like, kind of weird, like when you were in the hospital about to go into surgery and you started calling out Jared Gordon, you know, like, hey, Jared, I'm not going to be able to fight you for nine months, but in 10 months, I'm going to kick your ass. You know, that was like what he was saying. Oh, like, uh, you fuck you doing? that for Vola right now. What happened? Go feed that to Favola right now. Yeah, Favola saw it. Yeah, I'll send the for all of that. But like, I just didn't get it from Pimblet that I, Pimblet, you know, my, 
was like right here on Pimblet. He started gaining me as a fan. Then he lost me a little bit when he was fighting Jared. Then he totally lost me after that, where I'm like, bro, you handled that. You t- handled that terribly. The hospital call out was terrible. The whole situation, not good. Delusional. Delusional. I'm the baddest ever. I pummeled him like, what? But so I don't think Frivola should wait for that fight. If he's going to have to wait till next year, because if you have surgery, you know, UFC, if UFC is protecting Patty, they're not rushing him back from surgery to fight for Vola. They're getting him back in surgery in six to eight months, and they're going to have him fight contender series guy who's 0-2, who, you know, they're going to give his UFC shot. Yeah. I think um, anyway. But amazing win for Favola. I think it's a great call out. It's marketable. Um, but yeah, like you said, I think you go I think he goes out there, looks to climb the ladder again, calls him out again. Amazing call out. It's just the weight. I feel like he's gonna lose steam, his steam, waiting for for waiting for Patty to come yeah, back from an fresh. injury. You're he's the fresh. look at it like you're the A side, you know what I mean? I'm going to go beat somebody else and then be like, Patty, you scrub, get your shit together. Get your shit together. You can't even make it here. I just beat up another guy waiting for you. See you in March. You know, see you in March. You know what Uh I mean? Ooh, and then that was great. Steamroller had the crowd. He was, you saw that clip? He got, he had, that was the loudest thing I heard all night. He was like, give me a steamroller. And the whole place went nuts. Awesome. Yeah. All right, we'll wrap this up. Canelo also won a fight. I don't know how much you care about that. What did he fight? I think I saw he was fighting, but I didn't really get much. He wasn't fighting anyone special. Oh, and then even uh, Gotti versus Mayweather. What are your thoughts on that? We were talk- we were joking about that. Hopefully, maybe John Gotti, you know, they gave Floyd the bag. Right. And Floyd's going to slip on a banana peel for this one. No way. Him, him being undefeated and untouchable is worth too much money. Yeah. Any realm you want to go to that fight? Where is it? Florida. June 11th. Is it? June 11th? <coughs> Maybe. Oh, I have my son's uh, lacrosse uh, tournament upstate. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. The 10th. More of these kids' sports. All right, so we'll end it. We'll get more. We'll have more of that. John Gotti versus Floyd Mayweather. I definitely am going to try to go and be like John. I have a favor, favor to ask you, and he's going to be like, "What do you need?" I'm like, "Can I, can I go talk to Floyd? Give me the mic." He's going to be like, "Floyd, get over here. My son broke this kid's leg. He wants to talk to you." And I'll be like, "Yes." <laughs> so that's the game plan. So we'll end it here. You're going to Morgan Wallen. Yeah. When are you going? My lady is a big fan of uh, country music and his music. She even actually, she plays enough where I'm like, you know what? Not a bad song. I like it. Don't know him. Didn't know, like you guys mentioned him. And that I was like, oh, that's that guy. Yeah, I might go. How well, do I'm I gonna know go. She's going to the con. The tickets are like, she went, she bought them were like three and change. She's like, oh, I didn't get you. I'm like, well, 300. Like, don't get me any ticket for that much money. You know? But she's like, well, she went back to look and they were like closer to five. I was like, all right. Well, so the way we always want to, the way we always want to merge lot. into other things, and the way I told you, I want I'll go to country music festivals and interview people and do that type of shit. I'm gonna be in the parking lot. I don't know what part. Yeah, that's I'm what I'm be- saying. Like, the, but but I so in our hiatus, TikTok blew up, became this big thing, while we were slowing down with putting out podcasts and whatnot. So we lost a lot of topics. There's a gymnastics uh, gymnast named Livy who blew up. She goes to LSU. She is like, uh, she's the high. So you know how they have the NIL deals? Oh, yes. For college kids. For college, she's the highest earning NIL deal. Okay. She's a gym, like a junior or sophomore gymnast for LSU. Gorgeous. You know, she's a very attractive. I I don't even know if I could say gorgeous. She's young. She's 20. But, you know, attractive woman does flips and stuff. I'm a fan. I follow her on TikTok. I show her (laughs) to my little cousins. They're like, oh, my God, I love this girl. So, you know, she's like, you know. She, yeah. she captivates like the full send crowd, like a young crowd. They yeah. get people at her. They go to college gymnastics meets and they get blow up like uh, cardboard cutouts of her. And they like fucking, you know, Livy, we love you. Guys yeah. scream from the audience like Livy, Livy. Then when she looks, they go, how much for your bath water? You know what I mean? Right. Like just young kids being kids. But 
So Livy apparently started me being in my gossip when my gossip shit comes up, apparently was hooking up with Morgan Wallen. So Morgan Wallen canceled the show recently. And so, you know, he's a big country music star, all the girls, whatever. He's kind of like Taylor Swift. He has like fans like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they all started going crazy. Like, yo, what the, they put a big thing on the screen. Like, yo, uh, sorry, Morgan Wallen's sick. He's throwing up. He can't come out, blah, blah, blah. So people were like, fuck, this sucks. So girls with, you know, cameras go up to the security guards and like, what happened? And the security guards like, Shh, he's not sick. He's hung over. He was out partying all night last night. So apparently he's been partying with this college gymnast, Livy, allegedly. She's single. He's single. She's a big college athlete. He's fucking Morgan Wallen, big country star. You know, gossip shit. Wow. Uh, what's the age difference, though? Why he's old? I don't know. I don't even. I don't, I don't even, know. But in my head, I would imagine he's in his thirties. No. Oh my god! Then I'm a fan. I'm a bigger fan. <laughs> you know. Yikes. He's doing good things. And so that's how I, that's how I now know of Morgan Wallen because you guys recently mentioned him and he's he's hooking up with a college gymnast named Livy that I'm a fan of. Wow. Yeah. My girlfriend's gonna love this news. Yeah, tell her. Livy. Livy Dunn's the girl's name. So Livy Dunn just became the first, I think the first college athlete to be a sports illustrated swimsuit model. Okay. Damn, good Doing for big her. things. Well, I'm a big fan. You check her out, you might become a fan. If you're not allowed, you know, your lady be looking, you fucking just do a quick glance and it doesn't do anything for me. What? I mean, for me to like check out hot chicks online, like it does nothing for me. I'm not telling you to check out hot chicks. I'm saying well, no, I just I mean You took it as that. I'm telling you to check out the highest no, I un I understand what you're saying, but like I have a lot of friends that they follow like these Instagram models. I'm like, Why? no, I'm saying for the for the guys of conversation, you know, so that way you have. Yes, I know what you're saying. She's the highest again, earning NIL athlete. Thing. Yes, I'm saying a different thing. Where like, how many guys you know that like follow like all these like just girls that show pictures of their ass? Like you'll never meet them. It's just like what like. Watch Pornhub. What do you like? What? <laughs> why would you? I don't know. I just I do both. I get trouble because her girlfriend's like, ooh, ooh, "Why do you follow her?" I'm like, "Yeah, what do you like?" I do both. What do you mean? I watch Pornhub and I follow those girls. What do you mean? What do you get? What are you getting is, at? I don't know. I just I don't know. I just think it's pointless. But yeah, that's where I know Morgan Wallen from. Big right. big fan. Turn into a big fan. You told me he's thirty. He's dating a twenty year old college chick. I have no idea how old he is. Let's go, Morgan Wallen. Big things from Morgan Wallen. Uh, we'll have to look. But at yes, that. we're going to start rattling off some interviews, start setting up some guests. When Menace can't make it, I'll just send them in. And okay. uh, yeah, big things coming for Menace and the Man. It's good seeing you again, Menace. Likewise. Well, see you later.